Hey, I'm JR and I'm here with an ELAC speaker as you can see right here. Normally, we shoot these videos in our video studio. Today, we're in an install bay. Normally, there's a car in here and we're taking speakers out and putting the head units in and all that. Today, we've sort of absconded this room for our purposes. Uh, we're gonna do some pretty cool stuff with this speaker and it's gonna be worth it because what we've got here is the ELAC Adante AS61. Let's go ahead and reveal that. It's a beautiful speaker. It is heavy. You should try picking this thing up. We were highly impressed when we, uh, when we saw it, when we picked it up. The build quality is pretty great. We were looking at the design of this speaker uh, and there's some pretty special things going on. So ELAC hired Andrew Jones, a pretty well-known and respected speaker designer. Uh, and first they hired him to make a rather affordable line of speakers that sound really good and he did just that. Uh, this is the, the next thing he did for ELAC, which was to make a more of a cost no object design, right? They're not, they're not like $30,000 or anything. They're, they're expensive and worth it and designed by Andrew Jones with some neat stuff going on inside. Uh, when we saw what's happening inside, we thought, how cool would it be if the, we could take one and saw it in half? So we could see the design that Andrew Jones came up with. And so we contacted ELAC and they said, sure, they sent us one. We didn't have to grab one out of the warehouse and saw one that we would have sent to uh, some lucky customer. Uh, we grabbed one that's uh, never gonna see uh, a shipping box in a customer's home. So we're gonna be able to saw this speaker in half today. Um, we're gonna take the components out first uh, so we don't saw the speakers themselves, the drivers in half. Uh, and, uh, and then we're gonna sort of put it all half back together so we got a cross section so that you at home can see what's going on inside here uh, and then we'll probably put it on display on our uh, on our sales floor so all of our advisors will be able to take a look at this as well uh, and uh, hopefully not drool all over the impressive design so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get started uh, sawing this thing in half and taking it apart and all that safety goggles first uh, safety first we believe that here at Crutchfield as you know um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started that's the easy part. So first we'll start by taking the, uh, the front panel off here. There's two drivers, as you can see. Let me get you back on those. The top one here uh, is a concentric design. This is a mid-range, and in the middle of the mid-range is the tweeter. Uh, the whole idea here was to get the mid-range frequencies and the tweeter frequencies coming off the same plane at the same time, reaching your ears in a way that makes sense rather than having them kind of spatially confusing, which can happen with other designs. Um, and this looks like a woofer, but is slightly different than an actual woofer. And we'll see what I mean when we get inside here. This is technically a passive radiator. The actual driver, the speaker receiving the uh, amplifier wattage from your receiver, uh, is inside the box. So we're gonna, we're gonna see that once we get it apart. And I'm gonna go ahead and start here on the front panel. All right, so that's six screws off of the front panel. Now we're gonna pull it off and see what happens. Now I haven't done this before. There's no, uh, this has not been rehearsed. So I don't know what exactly we're gonna see when we get this apart. Ah, there we go. Oh man. Yeah, this is a pretty heavy duty piece of uh, brushed aluminum. Uh, that's impressive. Uh, I'm gonna set that aside over here. All right, now we've got two speakers with screws to remove those guys. So I think if I remember correctly, I need a different Allen wrench for that, right? That one. All right, we'll start by removing the uh, mid-range and tweeter. All right, this first speaker is ready to come on out. Now, it wasn't hooked up. That's probably because it was an engineering sample. This might be a good time to mention that as an engineering sample, they went ahead and just sent us the crossover separately. So this is uh, not already inside the box because they knew we were going to cut it apart. So they figured save us a step and uh, give us the crossover and one of the port tubes separate. More on that later. But there's your mid-range uh, and tweeter concentric driver. Go ahead and set that over here. We'll switch to a Phillips head bit to remove the woofer. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. All right. So what we've got here, you'll see there's no electrical connections on the back of this either, and that's because there's not supposed to be. This is what's called a passive radiator. It's a speaker cone with no voice coil uh, or magnet or anything like that on the back here. It's not connected to electricity. What makes this move is the air movement off the actual speaker, which we're going to see inside of here in a little bit. Um, but the air moving off of that speaker moves this speaker. So you're hearing kind of both uh, when you actually listen to the speaker. So, but that's what's going on here. It's nice, lightweight, but uh, very solidly built passive radiator. All right, look at that. You can see, let me show this camera here. You can see inside the box, there's the actual woofer. And you can see there's also two holes in here for the ports. That's where one of these uh, port tubes would go. Uh, so that the air is moving off of the driver, uh, off the face of the driver, as well as through the ports, uh, right into the back of this aluminum passive radiator. So that's what makes it move. Um, so that's, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and remove the connections board off the back, so then I can lay this flat on its back and I can go down in and remove the uh, woofer with the Phillips head, so. And those are some nice heavy duty connections right there. There are two sets of binding posts on the back. They're bi wireable and bi ampable. They come with the jumper installed, so you can just connect your speaker wire to one set of terminals if you want, but you got some flexibility here if you've got some extra amplifier channels you want to use. So, put that right there. Flip the speaker back around and lay it on its back so I can get in here and remove the Phillips head screws from the driver itself. I think I'll use a screwdriver for that since the drill is going to be a little clunky. And here comes the driver. That's where the magnet is. A nice big heavy duty magnet on the back of this solidly built driver. Once again, no speaker wires were connected. They knew it was an engineering sample, but that's the actual woofer. It's inside the box uh, and it's again firing into the back of the passive radiator uh, and it's in a ported enclosure inside this sealed stand mounted speaker. Um, all right, so the passive radiator, the mid-range tweeter, concentric driver, and the woofer itself have all been removed. We've got the speaker connections block removed, the crossovers handily pre-removed for us. So there's some really impressive uh, sort of insulation, uh, sound damping material in here that uh, we're going to remove so that it doesn't gum up in our saw. Uh, so let's see what we can do to get that out of the way. It's going to be easiest to rip it all out. There we go. Pretty impressive insulation. I don't see anything else in here that's going to impede our ability to saw the speaker in half, roughly in half. As you can see right on the front here, there's some magnets uh, that were integral to uh, holding the uh, front baffle on. Uh, so we don't want to saw right through that. So we're actually probably going to saw just a little off center uh, so that we're not sawing through metal and so that we don't have to drill out those pretty magnets. So. All right, so uh, once again, this is the ELAC Adante AS61 stand mounted speaker. We have taken it apart. As you can see, all the speakers, the front baffle, the connections, the crossovers not in it. Uh, keep in mind, this is an engineering sample. Uh, this, was not, this was not something we took out of our inventory. Uh, it was never going to be a working speaker. Uh, and certainly once we're done cutting it in half, it will never be a working speaker, uh, which maybe now's a good time to remind you, um, don't cut your speakers in half. Uh, that's what we're going to do, kind of to prove a point and to get a look at the beautiful insides of this speaker. Um, but if you were to try this at home, you would then be one less speaker. So uh, yeah, don't do this. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing in half if everybody's ready. We've got the dogs out of the way, safety goggles on, hearing protection on. 
Here we go. Oh yeah. All right, we've uh, completely cut through the speaker, flipped it right side up, and you want to see the inside? Here we go. The naked innards of the Elac Adante AS61. You can see some interesting things going on with the, uh, the bracing and the uh, sealed and ported cabinets in there. We'll get the speaker cleaned out and uh, sort of describe what we're seeing here. All right, so as you can see, we've got the speaker cut in half and uh, put back together uh, as best we could. So we've got the uh, mid-range and tweeter concentric driver mounted back where it goes, the passive radiator mounted below down here. Uh, let's take a look at the inside. This is the base driver, this massive crossover that they gave us. Now keep in mind, this wasn't in here when they gave us this speaker. We had to put it in and take our best guess at how to wire it because they did not provide us any wiring diagrams. So, uh, it's wired up as best as we can tell. Uh, hopefully that's correct. Uh, and then of course the connections thing down below. The reason we wanted to do this is because of this whole section down here. Um, I'm going to remind you, this is the bass driver. This is what's getting the bass frequencies through this crossover uh, and moving when your power comes into the speaker. Um, when it moves, it moves air right into the back of this passive radiator right here. It's also moving air through this port tube into this chamber, which also moves the passive radiator. Uh, so you're hearing the bass off the passive radiator, some bass is coming off of the bass driver inside. And uh, really the benefit to that, if you think about it, I mean anybody can design a ported speaker enclosure, which will make a pretty good amount of bass. Um, it might not be super tight, super musical, accurate bass though. And that's what Andrew Jones has accomplished here. With this design, you get the benefit of a lot of bass from a smaller stand mounted speaker, uh, as well as it uh, being controlled, tight, accurate bass that you're gonna, you're gonna really like listening to. So uh, we really wanted to see how we accomplished that to get our visuals on it. We're gonna take some pictures of this, put it in the catalog and on the website. Uh, and uh, since we were gonna cut a speaker in half, we thought you might enjoy watching us do that too. Uh, so if you have any questions on home speakers, be they these or any others, don't hesitate to give us a call, chat with us online, or send us an email. Our sales advisors are more than happy to help you out.